My name is Robbie Phillips, and welcome to the first episode of my new training series, The Process. Throughout this series, I want to share with you my philosophy on climbing and training. I want to disprove any of the misconceptions you may have about training, that it's solely about pulling hard indoors, one-arm pull-ups, and systematic training regimes. Throughout this series, I want to give you the tools to unleash your potential as a climber. Within the realms of the climbing arena, there are many forms of training. I always refer back to the performance triangle. These are the three main categories of performance. Physical encompasses all components of your actual physical body training, such as endurance, strength, power, and core. Technique governs climbing, exercises and drills that develop and hone your technical abilities to maximize efficiency on the wall. Mental is the hardest of the three, as it usually targets our most fragile inner self, the ego. As a climber who wishes to improve, you must embrace everything. Any weaknesses you have are holding you back. There is no shame in that. By accepting this now, you are taking the first step towards a higher level of performance and a much happier state of mind. Training is more about mindset than anything else. We need to actively focus on our performance, identifying strengths and weaknesses and analyzing our technique. We must pay close attention to how our body feels. If we're tired, if it's a busy day, done too much work or training, we may be at risk of injury. We must utilize a positive frame of mind constructively to enhance our training time. But how do we utilize all these effectively? Through goals. In order to train effectively, we need to have goals to aim for. Goals provide reason and direction to our training. Goals can be anything from climbing a local project, preparing for a climbing trip, or even getting a personal best during a training workout. The big difference between all these goals is the lifespan and real-time motivational factors. A personal best at the gym is a short-term goal. It provides short-term motivation to push yourself and a lot of these are necessary in the long run. Preparing for a trip is a medium-term goal. This provides motivation in the long run to prepare for the trip. Climbing your hardest grade is a long-term goal. This could be a dream route that you've always wanted to do or just a temptation of ticking that number. Whatever the reason, it requires long-term dedication and commitment. This alone won't get you there. You need the short and the medium-term goals to keep you motivated. But when that day comes, victory will taste all the sweeter. When choosing goals, they need to fit a criteria. They need to have reason as part of a process or a greater goal. They must inspire you. You need to love what you do. And they need to be achievable. Long-term goals can be dreams, Short-term goals must be realistic. After realizing your goals, the next thing to do is identify what you need to do to achieve them. What is the right stuff to train? As a beginner, technique is always the main focus. The physical and mental side comes from actually going climbing. As an intermediate climber, technique is still the main focus, but a small amount, if any, of supplementary training to focus on antagonistics and core is also good. The mental side of climbing involves learning to stay focused on a climb, sequence reading, and learning to deal with your fear of falling. With advanced climbers, technique, physical, and mental are balanced, with more focus on weaknesses and key areas. Depending on the goals, the training will vary. Identify the specificity required for your goals. Is it dependent on technique or style? Is it strength or endurance? Is it mental or tactical flaws? The process of getting better is a never-ending one. You will always find some way to improve. Just remember never to lose sight of your goals and always remember why you do it in the first place. Because you love climbing. If you enjoyed the video and you're psyched to learn more about how to incorporate these exercises into a training routine, why don't you check out this link. It's a feature article specifically designed for this episode. To follow me and my adventures, check out my blog at www robbiephillips.co.uk and check out Instagram, Twitter and my Facebook profile.